So here is an R44 weight and balance sheet. The first question is, how do we get the helicopter as weighed? Well, it's found in the helicopter journey log, but you have to be careful because there might be several different layouts for each helicopter. Anytime a sling hook or spray gear is installed or taken off, the weight and arms change. We're going to work with this real helicopter and figure out a real life weight and balance. So let's start with the pilot. Average around 200 pounds. The arms will get out of the POH. What we do is we multiply the arms times the weight to get the moments. We do this for the longitudinal and the lateral moments. With the passenger who's a little bit lighter, it's the same longitudinal arm, but you can see the lateral arm has changed a bit because they're on the left side instead of the right. Next, we have baggage under the aft right seat. Again, it's on the right side, so it's the same right arm, but the longitudinal arm has changed because it's further back. It's actually further from the front, which is where the measurement begins. And just for the fun of it, I've removed the right door because that's how I like to fly. You always want to do at least two calculations with a weight and balance. You want to try first with no fuel and then with fuel because as you fly, you burn fuel and your center of gravity changes. So the way to figure out the weight is you just add it up. Same thing with the moments. You add all the moments up and whatever you get, that's your moments. We're going to do the opposite this time to find where our arms, both lateral and longitudinal, end up. We're going to take the, the moments divided by the weight. Then, of course, we want to refer to our charts and make sure that we're within limits. If we're outside of our limitations, then I can't fly like this. I have to figure out something else. Maybe I'll bring an extra weight or take out some luggage. A little side note to know is that the weight and balance and the limitations are in different sections. According to the cars, I only have to go off of limitations. But since the limitations have my center of gravity, I have to then do my weight and balance to figure out where that center of gravity is to make sure it's within the limitations of the helicopter. The cars only asks for section 1 to 5 and section 9. Now that I have the weight without fuel, I'm going to figure out the weight with fuel. And it's the same thing, except this time I have to multiply the gallons of fuel by the weight of that fuel, which is, for instance, 23 times 6 and 15 times 6 to get the weight. Now notice how I don't add up all the arms. I only add up all the moments down the columns, and then I divide the moments by the weight to get the arms. Then I refer it to my chart, and as you can see, the green dots are within the center of gravity. Now there are faster ways to do this. For instance, there's an app called iBell Rotary where you just plug in the original numbers and it does all the math for you. It's a little bit more precise than doing it uh, the way I've been doing it. As you can see, the center of gravity has changed just slightly. Um, another thing to make sure of, and I've done this deliberately, is make sure you're using the right version of helicopter because if you don't, you might have a Raven 1 versus a Raven 2, and the maximum weight changes from 2,400 to 2,500 pounds.